Okay, welcome back. Now, up till now, we've been working with this one differential equation. The second derivative of x with respect to time is equal to negative omega squared times x. Now, all this time, we've just been using uh, this one general solution, which has the form x of t is equal to a times cosine omega t plus b times oops, sine omega t. Essentially, we've been saying that our general solution is a sum of two sinusoids that have the same frequency. Now, in this general solution, there are two undetermined coefficients, a and b, and we can find out their values by plugging in two initial conditions. Now, what if I were to tell you that there is another form of this general solution that conveys the same information, but in a different way? That, I'm just going to write out this form here. It's x of t is equal to c times cosine omega t minus phi. This is what we like to call amplitude phase form because the un undetermined coefficients in this case correspond to the amplitude of the sinusoid and the phase of the sinusoid. Now I just want to point out a couple of characteristics of this different general solution. First of all is it is a solution to this differential equation. If you were to plug it in, you will find that it works. Second is, like before, we have two undetermined coefficients. And like before, the only way we can find out the values is by plugging in the results of two initial conditions. And finally, I just want to point out that... Lastly, I just want to point out that this solution has the same frequency as before, omega t, or same angular frequency to be specific. Now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to go over like the actual math of how we can rederive this form from using this form. Before we do that, I just want to make sure that we all intuitively understand what's going on here. You may be saying, I don't really understand how these can be equal. Here we have two sinusoids, and here we just have one. And I'm not really too sure if this is indeed a general solution. Because I remember back a couple of videos ago, we said that the general solution needs to incorporate all possible solutions, including the case where it could be sine. Well, to briefly answer this question, uh, the amplitude phase form does correspond, to the, does correspond to the case where x of t could be sine. That's because that the cosine wave is, has the same shape as the sine wave. It's just shifted by a different phase. So this amplitude phase form can correspond to all the solutions that this sine cosine form makes. So just to make sure that we're all intuitively understand that, I'm just going to do one quick example. I'm going to, we're going to graphically add cosine omega t plus sine omega t. And hopefully, the solution is also a sinusoid with a different amplitude and possibly a different phase. But let's take a look. So here we have our graph right here. I'm just gonna, it needs to be specific, so I'm gonna do it up point by point. So let's start with the cosine wave. At, oh, this should be the t-axis. At time t equals zero, the cosine wave starts off at one. Then it drops down to zero. Then it goes down to negative one goes back up to zero, and goes back up to one. So let's see if I can gracefully connect points. Yeah, it's all right, it'll do. So now let's draw the sine wave. Here we have sine wave starts off at zero, it goes up to one, then it goes down back to zero, then down to negative one, and then back up to zero. So let's graph this one out. So we get it. There we go, that's a nice sine wave. So now what we're gonna do 
is we're going to add the sine and the cosine together graphically, point by point. So let's start off here. Here we have 0 plus 1. Well, that's just equal to 1. Now let's take a look at this point here. This point where the cosine and the sine term intersect. You can see that since the cosine and the sine term have the same value here, if we add them together, it's going to be double the value. So that's just going to correspond to a point probably up here. Now here's another easy point. Sine is 1, cosine is 0. The sum is therefore 1. Now let's just jump to here. The sine is 0, cosine is 1. Sorry, negative 1. So the sum is negative 1. Now here we have another intersection point. So the result is probably going to be double as much. Now here is 1 is 0, 1 is negative 1. So, so the result is negative 1. And here 1 is 0, 1 is 1. So the result is 1. So let's see if I can draw this out. I'm going to go... Okay, it is a bit messy, but it'll hopefully get the point across. Essentially, what I want to try and show is that the sum of adding these two, that the sine and cosine together, is also a sinusoid. It's periodic. Now, one key thing to point, well, a couple key things to point out. First is that it has a larger amplitude. It goes up farther and extends down farther than either the sum, sine or the cosine. The second thing is, it has the same frequency as before. Because if you notice, it undergoes one complete oscillation in the same amount of time. The third thing is, it has a different phase. The cosine starts off at a nice point where it starts off at the peak. The sine starts off at a nice point by starting off at zero. But the sum of them starts off at a bit of an odd point, it starts off like three quarters up the peak. So essentially, it's the same frequency, but just shifted by a phase. And in order to make sure you can like properly discern the lesson from my poorly drawn graph, I have a nice graphing program here. So let's just show just the cosine wave. Here is just a cosine wave. It starts at one, then goes down and up and down. And here's just a sine wave. Starts at zero, goes up to one, zero, negative one, etc. Here's sine and cosine on the same graph. Now, here's what happens if we add them together. The result is, like we said, a sinusoid that has a larger amplitude. It has the same frequency as before. It undergoes the same amount of oscillations in the same amount of time. But you can see more clearly in this case, it starts off at a bit of an odd point. It starts off like slightly up the peak. So it has a different phase as before. So hopefully you could see that the sum of the sine and the cosine can be represented by one sinusoid with just a different amplitude and a different phase. So what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be taking a look at the math behind this, recovering this expression from the amplitude phase form. And then in doing so, we're going to find out what the undetermined coefficients a and b are in terms of c and phi, and we're going to do the opposite, opposite way. We're going to find out what c and phi are in terms of a and b. So I will see you in the next video.